Hello, and welcome to this episode of Psychic Medium, Tony G. I'm Tony G, and guess what? I'm a psychic medium. <laughs> so today, I will be giving a reading to Yvonne. Yvonne is going to ask me, hopefully, many questions about her life and connect with loved ones on the other side. And I just want to thank her for being brave enough to get an on-air reading. So Yvonne, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure and I'm so happy that you're here. So I want to start with a question from you. However, I keep hearing mom, 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 and hearing it's going to be okay. You're worrying way too much. Everything will work out as it's supposed to. This might not be the way you plan things, but it's the way it's going to happen. Stop being in denial, start being in acceptance, and allow. Does this message make sense to you? Unfortunately. I usually wait until later in the show to make people cry. I'm so, so sorry. It's okay. And I don't mean to uh, seem insensitive by giggling no, while you're crying. No, not feeling that way. I do want to let you know that the biggest message that she has, and you have quite a few relatives that are actually over here. I usually see them over there. But she's going to be the one speaking today, and the biggest message that she has is, you're okay. You're going to be okay. You have a really good support system. This might not be what you want, but it is what you agreed to. This isn't what you want, but it is what you agreed to. So please understand that whatever comes next, it is going to be okay, and you are going to be okay. You feel like you won't be able to go on, and you have a, a lot of questions about, I, I don't know if survival is the right word, but how you're going to be able to do everything on your own. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay, thank you for confirming that. Um, we all go through a phase in our life where we have to learn that independence, whether we do it at a younger age or an older age. You are so much stronger than you think, know, or believe. You kind of, they're, they're just telling me, you don't want to be strong. <laughs> you like, <laughs> you kind of like being where you are, you kind of, and who wouldn't? Who wouldn't love it to just be able to take a break from having to pull out that inner empowerment and strength and being able to be okay? Um, it's really important for you to know that you are going to be okay. Now, I know that you feel like you're not. You feel like you are not going to be okay and things are not going to work out and you don't know what you're going to do when all is said and done. The first thing they want you to know is, this is inevitable, don't be in denial. The second thing they want you to know is, it's, it's okay to be hopeful, but not in denial. You're going to have a lot of responsibility on your plate that you're kind of trying to push off and not deal with. Is that accurate? There are certain things you should be doing right now that you're kind of saying you'll take care of that later. And some of this has to do with paperwork and some of it has to do with legalities, doesn't it? Are I'm that I'm not seeing, but Okay. But maybe, maybe there's something I'm missing. Okay. If it's not there now, it's going to be coming in very soon. Somebody's going to make a request of you. You have to honor that request. Okay. You're not going to want to, but you have to. When the request comes in, you'll know what it is. Has the request already happened? I hear yes and no. So it may have <laughs> happened once, but it's going to happen again. Okay. Or it may have been talked about in the past, but you're in a little bit of denial about it now. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
it would be much easier if the tables were turned in some ways. What does that mean? Uh, um, let me be as delicate as I can. If you weren't going, if you felt like, you, you don't, I, I, I need to say this very carefully, so give me a moment, because they're pretty blunt. They're trying to just lay it down bluntly, and I'm trying to be very, very delicate. This would be so much easier for you if you didn't have to make the survival decisions and be the person that has to handle all of this. In a way, it might be easier for you if you were the one that had to let everybody else make these decisions and decide everything, and you could kind of be in the opposite position than If I were the one that was ill? Yes, okay. thank you. It would be easier for you. And you kind of not would like, I, like it better is a, is a bad way of putting it, but it would be so much easier for you because you don't want this responsibility. You don't want to have to make these decisions. You don't want to have to deal with what's coming. Mm -hmm. You want to be in denial and pretend it's not happening. And they're saying, and again, they're very blunt because somebody up there is saying, get your head out of the sand, get your head out of the sand, look at it practically. What difference does it make? It's going to make a huge difference. I mean, if, if, if one part of you knows the reality, but the other part says, just don't deal with it. It's the devastation when it happens that makes the difference. Okay. If, 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 or when, it's the devastation of having that hope and being in denial and not looking at everything completely realistically, that devastation that comes in that moment when all of that denial is put in our face. And you think that you can prepare for that? Or they think? that I can prepare for that? I don't know that it's a matter of preparing for it as much as it's a matter of being a little bit more in a space of acceptance of it. There's no way to prepare. I want to be very clear about okay. that. I want to be painfully clear about the fact that there's no way to prepare. And there's no way to feel like it will ever be okay when that moment or those moments come. Mm -hmm. But being in a space where you are a little bit more accepting might be healthier in the long run. Well, I it, know, I'll, go ahead. It's I'm a sorry. mad, the way I would, would compare it is you can take your medicine a, a, a little at a time or all at once. And I know that's not the best analogy for this particular situation. And they know how very painful this is going to be for you. But they want you to know you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. A lot of the times the reason you're not accepting this is because the moment you think about it, you go to worst case scenario. And all those really painful thoughts and feelings come in and then you just shut it down. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. They're asking you to try to buffer your own mind mediate how bad you let that vision get. And I know that's difficult. Listen, my sister's oldest son had brain cancer and he was diagnosed when he was five. For eight years she fought a really good fight for him. And in the end, <clears throat> it was what it was. And there's no power in that moment. So I understand the denial and the hope. Now, 
if we can possibly be in a space where we are minimizing how bad it will be once they're gone, it's much healthier for us. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, and I know that um, that I'm going to get the answer when I ask you this, so I'm prepared, but how, how long is my life going to be precarious? Oh, precarious. As long, and you're not going to like this answer because they speak sometimes in what seems like a riddle, but it's not, as long as you let it be. Okay, I guess I have to ask this differently. <laughs> um, how long will it be till my life changes dr drastically? I'm getting two separate answers, and I want to tell you how much your life changes is dependent upon you, and whether it changes f for the worse or just changes for a different way is up to you also, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I hear a month, and then I hear a year. Okay. So there might be something that happens in a month and then something that happens within the year. Okay. Now, I do want to say, no matter what happens and how, however much time that, it's important to just embrace, have fun, and nobody wants to be remembered by their last... experience as this experience is. People want to be remembered for the fun and the love and the good ways that they changed people's lives. But we hold on to that last moment, that death. Like my nephew who passed when he was 13 was so funny and amazing, but it's always that last bit that we go to and that's the emotion we carry about him and that makes him really sad I mean he taught me like when one day when he was um, in his bed and he had lost his vision and um, it was very difficult for my sister by this point but she went in his room to say goodnight to him and he said he said mommy do you see the angels and she said what angels He's, uh, I'm going to cry again. He said, the angels, they're there. And she said, no, why are they here? He said, they're here for me, Mommy. Just very matter of fact, he knew. He was very accepting of it. And she, of course, like mother would, said, don't you dare go with them. Don't you dare. And he said, no, Mommy, they told me you're not ready yet. And so... They have a way of waiting until we're prepared. But that can't take too long. <laughs> <laughs> because we are never ready. We are never prepared. Okay, we are never ready for that. But know that there are already angels there. There are already angels in waiting. Okay? Mm -hmm. There are choices that have to be made here. I wasn't joking about that tissue earlier, was I? <laughs> you need it. Oh I would goodness. share this with you, but I don't think that you'd appreciate that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, uh, there are already angels in waiting, but we always have angels around us, no matter what phase of our life we're in, whether we're just being born in that transition or whether we're go ready to go back home and we're in that transition. And every transition in between, we always have angels with us. So I want you to know that he is not the only one that has angels with him. They are going to help you get through this process also. 
And I can't imagine what it would be like to be in your shoes and to have to go through what you're going through right now because I, I, I honestly, personally, I don't know if I could do that. I don't. So I'm, I know how brave you are and how strong you are for being able to do that. They're just asking to please have a little bit more acceptance for some of the things that are, m might be coming through. And I, I hope that makes sense to you. Well, it's not what I wanted to hear, no. <laughs> but... I'm sorry. No. They don't tell us what we want to hear. They tell us what we need to hear to prepare us. And most people would say, I don't want to hear anything bad. And I'm like, well, don't look at it as something bad. Look at it as something that's going to help you prepare for whatever's coming down because these things are going to happen no matter what. It's, but if we, nobody wants to be blindsided. Will he be prepared? He wouldn't be in the position he, w he is in if he wasn't. Well, he doesn't seem accepting. He might have a bit of denial, but he has a knowing also. He feels like he should have done more for everybody. He feels like he is questioning how, how he's, he is trying to, He's, okay, thank you. He's assessing his life and trying to figure out how he could possibly make up for some things. He feels like he may not have always, I don't want to say made the best choices, but he also feels like, like I think any of us at that point in our life will feel like, did I do enough? I just want one more moment. I want to be able to tell everybody I love them one more time. That's why I always tell everybody, just be that love now. Don't wait for that day. Because you might not get a, a time frame. It might happen instantaneously. Just be love now. Share love now. Tell people you love them now. Don't wait. Um, <clears throat> I am going to tell you, he has a, he has a knowing of what's coming but he has a little bit of denial about, about it, or a little bit of hope, like what if, but well, he knows it's not going, he knows. But he's making very serious decisions as if the future was gonna be there. Maybe he's making those decisions for Make no mistake, angels are helping him make those decisions. And there can always be a very little bit of denial. Everybody always has hope. Hope is what keeps us going. Yeah. Without hope, there is no existence. Yeah, that's true. But there is a knowing inside of him of the truth and one. Okay. Um, well, I guess the, another question is, um, you know that I have a lot of anxiety about driving. Yes. Am I going to be able to manage that? Not at first. Just because you're going to be devastated but you will get better out of necessity. Trial by fire, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> yes, you will, you will get better because you'll have to. But you also have an amazing support system that will help you. Okay, well, um now I'm going to ask you, I lost my dog, and he has never come to me. Okay. 
he has, you've just not experienced it. You've not felt it or seen it. When my little girl dog, Bella, went home, my baby girl went home, I saw her leave her body. I saw her jump out and smile at me. She went home and talked to me all that night. The next morning, she got out of bed. She stood by the doorway. I was like, come back to bed, Bella. Get back in this bed now. You get back in this bed right now. And an angel came behind her. And I said, OK. I saw the angel. I saw her. I said, OK, you can take her. Later that afternoon, she reappeared. And I've seen her every single moment since then. She shows up as a green orb in my pictures. There, it's, it's amazing. When my little guy went home afterwards, like a couple months later, he went home. And this was in September. And I'm just now being able to see him. So when we're ready, we will see what we can see. If I would have seen him then, I would have been just devastated. I would not have been able to handle it. He even showed up in my dreams as a lab <laughs> instead of a hairless Chinese crested because <laughs> it would have just been so devastating for me. What color was the lab? It is, a, it's a yellow lab, a yellow I lab. lost a black one. That's see? why I, I yeah. ask you that. Uh, see, but when we're ready, we feel them around us. They, but that doesn't mean they're not there. It just means that when we're ready, they can make their presence known. Until then, we just have to heal. We have to recover. Okay. And people will often say to me, I haven't had a dream about this person or my pet, or they haven't come to me. Our pets will show up as the most amazing things in our dreams if we're not ready to see them. Okay. So just keep that in mind. At one time, Max, my little guy, showed up as a baby elephant rolling in the mud. So how did you know it was him? Just a knowing. When I woke okay. up, I knew it was him. I just knew it was. Why would I dream about a baby elephant also? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um. Are there other things that, is there anybody else that would like to talk to me? Well, or? they're all here. Okay. Um, and your, uh, I keep hearing mom, mom, mom is the mouth, is the mouthpiece or the one that is speaking for everybody. I want you to know that you are going to be okay. That's her biggest message for you today. You will survive this. You will be okay. You're so much stronger than you think you are. You're so much stronger than you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I personally, I get that. She's saying that you have so much inner strength that you have not tapped into and that you're going to start tapping into it very soon. Sometimes we become strong out of necessity, not out of want. And they just... The biggest message they keep saying is, you are going to be OK. You're going to survive this. And even though you don't like this statement, you are going to survive him. It's the hardest thing in the world to do. And well, it's go ahead. going to be a, a painful transition for you. He's going to be fine. He'll go home right away mm -hmm. when, when it's time. Mm -hmm. And he'll be trying to console you from the other side. But you are going to be OK. And you are going to dig into those resources inside of you and find that inner strength that you have, even though you don't want to. Will I be happy? Eventually. Eventually. They're asking that you think about the good times and the fun and be grateful for the times that you had. 
and the amount of time that you had. So when my little, and I'm not trying to in any way compare my, my, my baby girl to your um, husband, but um, one of the messages I had was, be grateful for every moment you had with her, not for the moment she's not there. And I, it like turned me around immediately, just the whole way I thought about things. Now there's a grieving period, make no mistake of that. Don't get caught in it. What does that mean? Don't stay there too long. Don't stay there too long. Allow yourself to be okay when you're ready to be okay. And know, even though you won't be able to see him, he's not leaving you. You're just not able to physically see him the same way any longer, okay? So can I hear from my dad? Can I request hearing from him? Yeah, that? we'll have to do that on the next show. <laughs> <laughs> Because my we, mom is taking over. <laughs> well, and because we have like 60 seconds left oh, about. Oh, wow. That went okay. so fast, yeah, right? It yes. It did. Yep. I want to thank you for being so brave and sharing this very, very intimate and very difficult part of your life with me and with this show. And your mom and everybody up there is saying that they love you. You're going to be okay. They're going to surround you during this time and send you just as much love as they possibly can. They are helping you now and around you at all times now. Please don't feel like, please do not feel like you are going through this alone and they're saying we've all gone through it ourselves and we're going to be here to support you while you go through it, okay? Please, please, please know that. And I want to tell you, as soon as he, as soon as you're ready after the fact, come to me. Okay? Thank you so much for being a guest today. I'm so grateful and honored to be able to guide you in these very, very difficult moments. And I want to thank everybody for joining us today on this episode of Psychic Medium Tony G. Until next time, have an amazing day.